Hey guys, it's JT Tran, America's number one Asian dating coach. And today I have a really special guest. Now, you guys know I always like to bring in experts from different fields to help you improve your life beyond just dating and pickup. So today I have Matt Tran, no relation, although maybe who knows, right? <laughs> Matt Tran from Engineer Truth, who provides realistic career advice. So, Matt, tell our audience a little bit about yourself. And then we're going to talk about how you guys can be more successful in your career. Yeah, about four years ago, I started my YouTube channel with a rad video, and it turns out that there's a lot of inaccurate career information online. Mm. And start off with engineering because people think that engineering is going to be this glamorous job. <laughs> you're, in a, you're, you're a former engineer. Yeah, so you know so what I'm they think you're going to be like in this factory, and they're, you're, you're in AutoCAD, and you're designing, and the team is like super intense, and you're you're modeling things like 3D printing all the time, but. You know, in reality, at least the jobs I had mm -hmm. were very boring and involved a lot of paperwork. And I showed that on my channel. It got a lot of popularity. And now I generally just make realistic career videos because uh, I think your career affects all aspects of yes. your life, especially your dating life as yeah. a guy, and also affects your relationship with your family. So I feel like through my videos, I help people uh, help with all aspects of their life because once you have a good career, everything else is a lot easier. Okay. Well, thanks for coming in today. And like I said, we want to provide you guys with good value about how you can be more successful at your career. So Matt, what are some golden nuggets that, that guys can use today to be better at their job, to be more successful, yeah. to make more money? The first thing is you got to threaten to leave every few years when you feel like you deserve to get a raise. Uh, for to be honest, the main, the main way to get a significant raise today is to apply for other opposing jobs, get a counter offer, and you, that's the way you're gonna, first of all, communicate that you're really serious. You're mm -hmm. a serious person, right? If you go to your boss like, hey, you know, I, I got a, another offer for $10,000 more. Mm -hmm. uh, this is what I think I'm worth. I would love to stay here if you guys could give me a counter offer. That shows that you're proactive. It also shows that you're worth more than what they're paying you, and that's right. the real way, right? Right. Uh, and I just think it, it, it really is the best way to get a raise. Right. Now, I did something similar, not quite like when I was in the job, but I remember when I was first getting my first real job, yeah, yeah. I interviewed and I got multiple job offers and then I sort of like played one company off the other. Yeah. So that's why like entry level, like straight out college, I was making six figures because I did yeah. that. But I didn't do what you said, which was like when I'm in there for like two, four, whatever years, you know, it didn't cross my mind. So I think that's a really ninja tr you know, tip to use. Know your market value, guys. Don't simply yeah. bury your head in the sand and be a you know, company man or like a salary man, like know your worth, yeah. get your market value, right? So, you know, it's like Kelly's blue book value on cars, like yeah. know what you're worth. And how, how often should they do that? Like every, every year. Every year, yeah. oh, okay, yeah. so be aggressive about it. Well, because people think that they're afraid to have that conversation to the boss, but mm -hmm. it's not like your boss is gonna fire you. Hey, you're worth <laughs> more somewhere else, so we're gonna let you go. No, I think for the most part, this is a generalization, but for the most part, if you go out to a boss, it shows like, oh, this person's very serious about their career. They're very, uh, what's it called, knowledgeable, and they're very serious. So they're gonna treat you more serious, right? right? But if you're the, the you're the pushover where you never ask for a raise, you never threaten to leave, they're gonna think, oh, this person is uh, settled. He's comfortable, mm -hmm. right? So it's good to be aggressive. It's good to be the the squeaky wheel that gets the grease. Right. So how should they actually approach their boss? Because yeah. you know you don't want to be like a douchebag about yeah. it. What you want to do it in, in a very kind of subtle but still kind of assertive manner. Right. I think there's always a, a better ways to do things, <laughs> and your communication with Asian player might be advice here too. Mm. But I always think it's always better to just talk in person. Obviously, you mm -hmm. never want to send something like this over email. The second thing is. You always want to be very gentle and mm. don't be so strong about it. So like uh, the way I would do it is, hey, JT, you're my boss. Hey, uh, there's something I'd like to speak to you about, right? And then we're speaking in this room like, hey, I just want to let you know that I received an offer from this company. This is the offer. And you maybe even show them the letter. Like, you know, but I really enjoy working here. If you guys could give me a counter offer, I would definitely consider yeah. staying here. But otherwise, you know, I think this is an opportunity that's great for my career. Uh, and that's pretty much it. I think that's exactly, you can mimic, take, take that exact <laughs> script uh, and, and present it that way. Yeah, yeah it's like, I, I love the company culture here. I'm very comfortable. I like you, you know, but 
yeah. I am getting these multiple job offers yeah. because I know what I'm worth. Yeah. Obviously, you should be competent at your job too. Yeah, yeah. But definitely, like I said, speak up. All right, I really love that advice. That's super ninja. What else do you have for guys? So number two is take your main profession and then create a side income from it, typically by being the YouTuber, blogger, or influencer in that subject matter. So Basically incorporate yourself so you have like passive income on the side. You wanna create the passive income for two reasons. The first reason is in case you ever get fired, mm -hmm. you need something to hold you down and even if you make one or $2,000 from the side in income, it can help tremendously if you ever get fired. Right. And that's a very realistic thing, especially I think being fired and laid off now is a lot more common than it was mm -hmm. 30 as, years ago. As they call it, the gig economy, right? The gig economy. Uh, and then also how this helps is that it actually helps you with your resume when you apply mm -hmm. for jobs. For me, uh, before when I used to work as a social media manager or a YouTuber for companies, what I would just do is just send them a link to my YouTube channel and of course my experience too and example videos. But I almost always got a call back for those positions because they just click on my channel, they saw 100,000 something subscribers and some of my videos got 100,000 views with zero budget mm -hmm. and they think, and they think Oh, this guy obviously knows what he's doing when it comes to YouTube and social media. So we're going to give this guy a call. And so for me, those job positions were very easy because I had an online resume or portfolio. So that's tip number two is use it to create a side income and it'll also be a resume piece. Yeah, I mean, you can, like I said, do YouTube, blog, or there are like freelancing sites like Upwork where you can kind of offer your service in whatever field that is. Yeah. It, basically, it also gives you that feeling of confidence that you are not a slave to the one company, right? right? You, yeah. you have that parachute, so to speak, where even if you lose it or whatever, you have something that will help tide you over. And that will give you like a lot more confidence in who you are because you're not dependent upon like this one source of income. And I know your channel is about self-development and I think mm -hmm. when you earn your own dollar, it does break a lot of frameworks in your head and you yeah. start having a more accurate mental model of how money works. Yeah. And I, I really think it's a, the most empowering thing to say, I like this job, but I don't need this yeah, job. Yeah, I could take it or leave it. I, yeah, because yeah. mm -hmm. I'm in a situation where, I, I mean, if someone came up to me with a great job, I would take it, but I don't need it. And that's mm -hmm. a very comfortable place to be in. It's not so desperate, which oddly enough, it actually makes you more desirable to employers <laughs> because yeah. then it's just like dating, right? If you don't need You them, know your worth. Yeah, if you don't you know need your them, worth then it's like you make, you're you something more attractive, but mm -hmm. I legitimately don't need them. You can't just fake it, right? right you can't just right. fake, oh, I don't need a job, but I'm really <laughs> $0 a month. So I, I actually don't need their job. I legitimately don't need their job. And so when you don't need someone's job, it actually makes them want to hire you more okay. because you're in a situation like this guy must be very knowledgeable. He must be very smart. Mm -hmm. So it, it makes you more desirable. All right. uh, That's really good thinking outside the box because hey, I know if my audience being Asian, Asians, we are entrepreneurial, so tap into that and yeah. incorporate yourself. Um, speaking of resume, yeah. uh, how do they spice up that? You say that you know by by doing the side thing, they could spice up their resume. Like, yeah. let's expound upon that a little bit more. Yeah, so that actually comes to point number three: is a lot of people, especially college students, they get this uh, archaic career advice that their resume needs to be. Times New Roman, black and white, and <laughs> on like you know, like pound paper. Yeah, and it has to you know ha has to have no graphic design to it at all. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's true for if you're gonna apply for a very serious company like a law firm or something, do it that way. But if you're aiming for a young company, you're gonna apply to ABCs of Attraction. <laughs> you don't want to have that resume. And for most younger companies owned by younger people, like 30 year olds, uh, you want something more interesting. So you're gonna want to have. A resume that is clear and is scannable, but also maybe even has some color to it, has some graphic design. But most importantly, you want to document and take pictures and videos of you, you in the process of doing your career and also any of your successes. Mm -hmm. Then make a website, a portfolio website, where you put all those pictures and pieces of media so that when you apply for a job, you can put the link and they can open yeah. your portfolio. And that's a very strong piece that not a lot of people do. Uh, this. Originally, it was only for graphic designers, video editors, and coders, but I'm, I think it can now apply to almost any, any field. Yeah, kind of the millennial generation, but yeah. I really like the fact that you say document your success, yeah. right? Because again, with a lot of Asians, not all Asians, obviously a lot, but a lot of Asians, you know, we kind of like quiet, put our head down, yeah, yeah. work hard, and don't blow our own like horn, toot our own yeah, horn. Yeah. But it's important for you.
you guys to, to document. If you got awards, if you did something special, like yeah. I remember, for example, I sort of did what you, you, you suggested, but I, I really wasn't aware that I was doing it. Mm -hmm. And the fact that I remember getting awards when I was an aerospace engineer, I put like a spacecraft through testing like so fast and I got a $10,000 bonus check which was like sweet but I doc I documented it on my resume yeah. or when I got my first internship I offered to do it for free for the entire summer yeah. but they're like oh we'll pay you and I put that on my resume yeah. like their their intern at this space company and by doing that and by having the award and the plaque and all that it helped a lot on my next job because they yeah. could see that I was different from like the normal kind of resume that was coming in. Yeah. And I also really liked the, uh, the what you call it the personal portfolio website because that seems to be like the big thing, especially for those who are in like IT or creative fields because I hear about those um, resumes. What was it like Airbnb, like that Airbnb lady? She made it, a like, fake listing. Yeah. Also her resume. It, it, it just yeah. went super viral and I'm yeah. pretty sure she got the job. Yeah, they'll right? always get the job because I mean they have so much space and like that person's amazing. Yeah. Right? You need to hire that person. So you can be creative. I mean you don't need to go that far, but yeah, building a personal portfolio website just you know that's a great step and again documenting it so that you just look awesome right you want to toot your own horn so that when you get the next job or ask for a salary raise you have it like concretely there that people can look at well one of the concerns that a lot of employers have is you have these things on your resume but one of the concerns is did, is it did, fake yeah is it fake yeah and it's just like communicating anything else and that's why i hate the idea of an archaic uh, times new roman resume because it's so often fake these days. Mm -hmm. And as soon as you just have a personal portfolio, they click on a website and all the pictures and, and videos are there, there's no doubting yeah. anymore. It's like a little bit of social proof, so. It's a little bit of social proof and it is it's a form of communication, right? Like when someone has that viral resume, what are they communicating? They know they're communicating that they're very socially savvy, their mm -hmm. communication that they know design, and their communication that they know marketing, right? right. So when, you're, when you have the personal portfolio, you are communicating and you definitely want to use a template, if anything, right? right. And you don't want to have like the worst 1995 website, <laughs> uh, you know. <laughs> like, like, a like, like a lot of uh, like graphics. Like yeah. <laughs> All right, so far, shh, this has been great advice, guys. Definitely use it. You'll be more successful. You'll make more money. And hopefully the next job that you get will be something that is fulfilling to you yeah. because you are the go-to guy, all right? So Matt, how can our audience find more about you? Where should they go to get even better career advice that really dives deep? Just go to youtube.com slash and you can be able to find all my videos there. All right, we'll also put it in the description box, so be sure to subscribe. So thank you so much, Matt. Be sure to stay tuned for our next video. Bye guys. Thanks for watching our video. I hope you liked it. And make sure you guys subscribe to this channel and watch all our other videos. Great news too. Every Monday, we'll be putting out a new weekly video. That's right, we've got educational seminars, street interviews, uh, fun infield pickup videos, and anything else we can come up with that's fun for you guys to watch. So check back.